Hi, this is Mrs. Wiederhold. Welcome to my lesson video on nth roots and rational exponents. Now let's get started. Here you will see four equations. And in each equation, the term that's on the left side of the equation is in radical form, and the term that's on the right side of the equation is in rational form. Because these are equations, we know that the left side is equal to the right side. So I want you to look at each one carefully, and can you identify the pattern? Let's take a closer look at the first equation. Now first of all, I want you to notice that the radical sign that you see is a square root symbol, which means you are taking the second root of 3. Remember, square means second, or to the second power. So if you're taking the square root of something, you're taking the second root of it. Now look at the number 3 that's inside the radical sign. Now remember, even though you do not see an exponent, any number that you don't see an exponent for has an invisible 1. So really, right here, we are taking the second root of 3 to the first power. So if we look on the other side of the equation, that is where the 1 comes from, and that is where the 2. The 2 comes from taking the second root. The 1 is because 3 is to the first power. Now let's look at this example right here. This time, our radical sign has a 3 in front. So we could say we are taking the cube root of x, which means we're taking the third root of x. Now remember, x, I don't see an exponent, so I know there's an invisible 1 there. So if we look to the right side of the equation, the denominator of this exponent, which is 3, comes from taking the cube root of x. And the numerator, or the 1 in my exponent, comes because I'm taking it from x to the first power. Are you starting to see a pattern now? Well, let's look at the third one. In this example, we are taking the fourth root of x to the fifth power. And that is the same thing as saying x to the 5 fourths power. The 5 comes from the exponent 5, x to the 5th power, and that's where the numerator comes from. The denominator of 4 comes from taking the 4th root. Now let's quickly look at the last example. This time we're taking the square root of x to the 3rd power. Well remember, taking the square root is taking the second root of something. So that's why my denominator in my exponent is a 2, because we're taking the second root. Well, we're taking it of x to the third power. So the numerator of my exponent is 3. Now let's move on and learn a little more detail about the two forms that you see, the radical form and the rational form. Now there are some math terms that we need to go over. Some of them you may be familiar with, and some of them you may not be familiar with. So first, I want us to look at the left side of the equation, the one that has the, the side that has the radical. Now let's look at the different parts of this radical. First, I want us to look at this right here. This number here is called the index, or the nth root. And it's called the nth root because it could be the second root, the third, the fourth, the fifth, and so on. So that n just stands for whatever number of root we're looking for. Now, when we're taking the square root, the index is invisible. Because when we're taking the square root, that means the index is 2. And because it's so commonly used, we just don't show it. So anytime you see a radical sign and you do not see a number here, that means we are taking the second root or the square root, okay? So we need to make sure we understand what the index is. Now, let's look at the radical sign itself. Now this, most of you are familiar with, 
and most of you might call it the square root symbol. But really, this is a radical sign. And what makes it a square root symbol is if the index is the invisible 2. Now let's look at what is inside the radical sign. And what is inside the radical sign is called the radicand. The radicand is everything that is inside the radical sign. So in this example, d to the m power is the radicand, not just the d. It's everything that's within the radical sign. Now let's talk about the right side of the equation. This term is expressed in rational form. Whenever the exponent can be expressed as a fraction, that's what makes it and why we call it rational form. These terms you're probably familiar with. First, let's talk about the base. The base is the number or the variable that is being raised to another power. And the exponent is the power that you're raising it to. So anytime you have a term that is expressed in radical form, you can always express that same term in rational form. And then the same can be said the other way around. If you have a term that is in rational form, you can always express it in radical form. Now let's do some examples. Write the following in radical form. Now I'm going to start here with 3 to the 1 -sixth power. My exponent is 1 -sixth, and from this exponent I'm going to be able to tell what my index is. My index for my radical form will be 6, and then my radicand will be 3 to the first power. But we don't normally show first power, so my radicand will simply be 3. So it'll look like this. I'm going to start with my radicand, put my radical sign, and I know that my index is 6. So 3 to the 1 -sixth power equals the 6th root of 3. Okay, let's look at the next example. 8 to the 1 -fifth power. Well, the denominator of my exponent will be the index for my radical form. And my radicand will be the base to the power of whatever my numerator is. And in this case, my numerator is 1, so it would be 8 to the first power. And again, we don't show first powers, so my radicand will simply be 8. And it will look like this. I will have 8. I'm going to draw my radical sign, and then my index is 5. Now let's look at the bottom two examples and write the following in rational form. So here I'm going to look at the square root of 51. Now the first thing I'm going to look at is, do I have an exponent? Does my radicand 51 have an exponent? And it does have invisible 1. Okay, so I know that when I rewrite this, my base will be 51, and I know that in my exponent, my numerator will be 1. And my denominator, remember my denominator, is the index from the radical. And when you're taking the square root, that invisible root is 2. So the square root of 51 is equal to 51 to the 1 half power. Now let's look at this example. I have the cube root of 37, or you could read it as the third root of 37. Well, I know that my base is going to be 37, and so when I'm looking at my exponent, the first thing I do is I look to see, did my radicand have an exponent? And it had invisible 1. So that's my numerator, and the index will be my denominator for my exponent. So the cube root of 37 is equal to 37 to the 1 -third power. Now let's evaluate the following expressions. First we're going to look at the square root of 9. I think most of you know that the square root of 9 
is 3. So now let's move on and look at 9 to the 1 half power. So if I want to evaluate that, I may not be sure what 9 to the 1 half power is, but I know I can change it to be in radical form. So I can do that by saying, okay, 9 to the first power is going to be my radicand. So simply 9. I put my radical sign and my denominator becomes my index, which we don't have to show. That means it's the square root of 9. And look, we've already determined that the square root of 9 is 3. Now, let's look at the square root of 81. I think most of you know that the square root of 81 is 9. And so now we can look at 81 to the 1 half power. And what do you think that answer, or what do you think that's going to equal? You got it. It's 9. Because 81 to the 1 half power is the same thing as the square root of 81. So, what do you notice about the above expressions? Think about it. Now, let's practice simplifying expressions. First, let's look at the square root of a to the 12th power. Okay, I'm going to change that to rational form. And so I'm going to change that to a to the 12 over 2 power. And a to the 12 over 2 power, well, what is 12 divided by 2? 12 divided by 2 is 6. So we have a to the 6th power. Now let's look at the next one. We have the cube root of a to the 9th power. So again, I'm going to go ahead and change this from radical form to rational form. So my base will be a, and my numerator of my exponent will be 9, and the denominator of my exponent will be 3. So I have a to the 9 thirds power. Well, 9 divided by 3 is 3, so that simplifies to a to the third power. Now let's do the third example. We have the square root of x squared times y to the fourth. Now, we do have two variables, but our process doesn't change. I'm going to change this to rational form. First, I'm going to change the x. So, I know that my numerator of my exponent will be 2, and because my index is also 2, that means my denominator of my exponent is 2. So I have x to the 2 over 2 power. Now, for my y, again, since my y is raised to the 4th power, that's my numerator, and then the index is my denominator. And you might be saying, where are you getting that 2 from? Remember, if you do not see a number in the index, that's because you're taking the square root, and that 2 is your index, and your index is what becomes your denominator. So now we're ready to simplify. So I have x to the 2 divided by 2 power, which would be x to the first power, or x, and then I have y to the 4 divided by 2 power, which would be, or 4 over 2 power, which would be y to the second power. So that's my answer for that one. Now let's look at our last example. We have the square root of 9 times x to the 4th times y to the 6th. Okay, well first thing, we know that the square root of 9 is 3. So I'm going to take care of my coefficient there. Now we are going to look at the square root of x to the 4th. Well, that means since it's x to the 4th, in my radicand, that means the numerator of my exponent will also be 4. And because my index is 2, my denominator is 2. Now let's look at y to the 6th. Well, since 6 is the exponent when it's in the radicand, that will be my numerator for my exponent. And because the index is 2, my denominator is 2. So now I can simplify that further. My coefficient doesn't change, it's 3. 
x to the 4 halves power is x to the second power, or x squared. And y to the 6 halves power is y to the third power. So there you go. That's our answer for that one. 3 x squared, y to the third power. Well, I hope this video has helped you understand a little bit more about nth roots and rational exponents. I also help, hope it has helped you understand the difference between radical form of a term and the rational form of a term. Anyway, I look forward to working with you again. Bye-bye.